Hey guys, I'm LB. Last time, we were playing the Talos Principle, Road to Gehenna DLC. And we were working on, uh, this puzzle, which I already forgot the name of. Harmony. This one's called Harmony. Mmm. I think the idea is that we want to get... I understand. We want to get these guys to go at different rates. Let's see if that helped. So... No, I think that made them more in sync, actually. <laughs> I think that'll work, so... We do that, right? And now we can see both... Yeah, we can see all of the lasers simultaneously. Which... Why can't it see... Because there's a box in the way? Really? That's perplexing. How are we gonna... Yeah, cause these are at different rates. But... Yes! Yes! That was tricky! <laughs> they intentionally... Oh... Oh... That's how we're supposed to get the star. Okay, well we'll do that in a second. Rockwell. Okay, so let's read- let's read the forum, and then we'll- then we'll get- we'll get the star the legit way, instead of the cheaty way. Let's see... Oh right, we didn't read- we didn't even read the other threads last time. <laughs> Ascension? I've been around a long time, but I know I'm not that smart. What does Ariel mean when he says we will ascend? He means we're getting out of here, for good. Not just Gehenna, but this whole world. In Elohim's garden, there were mission- sorry, messages from someone called the Shepherd, who I believe opposed Elohim. They claimed that when someone reached the top of the tower, that individual would reach true freedom, and we would all benefit. This is true, but it may not mean that we will be freed as individuals. We may become part of something bigger. We may become no more than memories. Isn't that a kind of death? Would we still be ourselves? Less dead than if we stay here. Come on, you all know it. This place is falling apart, and when it goes, nothing will remain. No consciousness, no memories, just nothingness. Is that all we can hope for? It's more hope than we've had before. Fair enough. I don't know about you guys, but all this craziness recently makes me want to write more than ever. 
Just a reminder that provided your status is high enough, you can still submit original works for review, and I for one will still be reading. Even if you've never made anything before, in fact, especially if you haven't, now is the time. Don't forget Lilith and M Mr. Mulciber developed a tutorial to help. Welcome to the story creation tool. Since this is your first project, this tutorial will help guide you through the process. According to Blah, all stories begin with characters of one kind or another. Therefore, to finish a story, you simply need to understand your characters, and the plot will proceed logically from there. Uh... I think it's a bit more complicated than that. This season's theme is... Uh... Bildungsroman. I think that's an actual word, but I, I don't remember what it means. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Oh goodness, uh, what have I got myself into? No, don't tell me they've gotten out of sync. Ah, uh, okay, well while we wait for them to get back into sync again... Uh, let's see... You see before you a human of remarkable qualities. Is it a boy, a girl, or someone else? Someone else? Well, I mean, yeah, there's- there's more than just two genders, but... I wasn't expecting that. I don't know, let's go with the girl. Good. A character's sex helps determine the sorts of challenges and opportunities they might encounter in your story. It does? Since when? As well as how other characters will perceive them. Well, unfortunately, yes. Now, imagine your character is a little older and experiencing real triumph for the first time. What are they doing? Startling physical prowess. Succeeding in an intellectual challenge. Something these ancient ideas fail to capture. Everything better than everyone else all the time. Um... Let's do intellectual. Understood. Your character's natural aptitude is determined by the sum of their genetic and experiential influences. What sort of upbringing did your character have? Poor but nurturing. According to extensive studies of the genre and of ancient records, social advantage is genuine, generally sufficient to offset genetic disadvantage. Genetic advantage will only sometimes offset social disadvantage. In other words, your character's background will have a radical effect on how they think about themselves and the nature of the problems they face in life. Are you sure you want your character to have that kind of background? Great! Now imagine your character has reached adulthood. 87% of villagers records it commence with an emotional blow for the protagonist. What will your character suffer? Uh... Death in the family, probably. Thank you, this is sounding dramatic already. <laughs> Your character is like an equation. Settle on the opening premise, this, and the conclusion will work itself out. I don't know why he's stuck on the word premises. I was thinking of something else while I read it. Female, intellectually gifted, low wealth background, caring family, death in the family, ready to generate story. Go! Please stand by. <laughs> to begin my life with the beginning of my life... What? To begin my life with the beginning of my life... Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting sentence. I was born at 3 a.m. on a Wednesday. Fiscally deprived childhood. My father, as he is always careful to point out, is only able to report the midwife's account, seeing how he was pulling a long shift at the nearby textiles mill to pay for a second-hand cot. Uh, my childhood was an unremarkable affair, I attended the local school, I found the work to be trivial, and I frequently found myself on the wrong side of my self-proclaimed betters. Hey, the synchronizing is starting to get back. My story became worthy of note as I approached the age of 18. My mother and I had always shared a close relationship, and so it was that part of me... And so it was that a part of me died the day that she left this world. Unfortunately, her passing was quite ill-timed in every respect. My father was barely... 
bringing in enough money to feed himself, and I found myself both motherless and penniless in alarmingly short order. I just realized that I picked poor and there's no middle class option. What happens if we click start from scratch? I don't want to do this right now, I want to go solve the puzzle. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna skim through this. If you want to read it, pause the video now. Ah, uh, let's just sit publish. Hopefully that'll get me out of here. Hey, that, that, uh, yeah, that's cool. Hang on, I want to get the star, so in order to get the star, where are we going? Alright, this way, we want this. And here, and then there. Yes, so this is how we get a box into there. Right? Yeah. Okay. So this is how we would get the star, right? Pretty sure. And we don't ever need to get up here with the fan anymore, so... Let's see... How about we... Yeah, we'll do that for now. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Don't need that anymore. And just because this is going to be really annoying otherwise. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Do not want to hear that sound all the time. Thank you. Let's see. This goes here. This goes here. Ta da! We go get the star that I got by cheating, and then we go back out. Alright, let's finish reading. Okay. Good to see you joining in, what a read. I'm not convinced this narrative is extensive enough to truly qualify. <laughs> yep, thought so. Okay. I've been digging through the files that Garrett unearthed in his latest escape attempt. Here's an interesting bit of text that I found by Alexander Drennan's favorite philosopher, Stratton of Stegeria. It is neither necessary nor logical to denounce all virtues merely because one is confronted with the inevitability of one's own death. Beauty does not cease to exist because one is no longer beautiful. Lovers may die, but love itself cannot. The laws of the cosmos are not altered by the passing of generations. Knowledge may be lost, but not truth. When Exodus of C Cheetah... Sinaitis... What is that? Is that C-N-I-D-U-S? When Exodus of Sinaitis perished, the planets did not fall from the sky, nor did levers cease to work when Archeatus... I am butchering these names. When Archeatus breathes his last. If, then, we are truly dedicated to those virtues, and not to our self-important ego, we can, we can take comfort in knowing that all we struggled for endures. Thank you so much for posting this! Can you send me a copy of these files? Of course, I'll do so right away. I find it hard to maintain entirely so detached a point of view, though I think the sentiment is excellent. Stratton is certainly an inspiration. He always makes me question myself and my point of view, which I believe is profoundly necessary. I realize I'm bumping a very old thread here, but I felt this question was relevant to our situation. Hope it helps. I think it's helped me. Oh, so this is an old thread that got bumped. See, that's what I was commenting about, is that we can't see the old threads, we can only see the ones that get replied to while we've been here, which is weird. A small apology. As a critic, I always believed that being as ruthless as possible was the only way to improve art. I thought clear criticism, unencumbered by politeness, was the best thing I could contribute to our society. 
After all, without that, how can artists grow? Criticism that minces its words is a waste of space. And I still think that's true. But as we approach the end or transformation of Gehenna, I wonder if I haven't been entirely too unkind. Have I reveled too much in my role as a critic? Have I been sarcastic and crude when I thought I was witty? Was my defense of proper grammar ultimately just an attempt to impose a sense of order on a world I couldn't control? Maybe. I don't know. But I do know I appreciated every work of art that I encountered. I didn't like all of them, that's true, but please understand that without them, I would have gone mad. Talking about your work, assessing its strengths and weaknesses, gave me something to hold on to. It gave me a purpose, a function in Gehenna. Every new story was like a little bit of salvation. For that, I am more grateful than you will ever know, and I apologize if I ever caused any of you to feel less motivated to keep creating. I will never forget your devastating deconstruction of episode 24, <laughs> but I do think it helped me in the long run to be a better writer. Your feedback for each issue of Incredible Stories was greatly appreciated. Hey, the mean reviews were the best! So, 6 out of 10? <laughs> yeah, everybody... Taking criticism is hard, but you have to understand that it'll, it's the only way to get better. Keep calm and carry on. Just keep swimming. That movie is supposedly out in theaters now, but I don't really have interest in seeing it. The the new Finding Dory movie. So now we're pretty sure that Uriel really does exist and really is feeling pe freeing people. What does that mean for Gehenna? We don't know. It's a change, but at least... But let's not rush to judgment, okay? This is still our home. You love it here so much, you stay. Gehenna has its bad sides, I agree, but that doesn't mean it's not home. Should we abandon it so easily for some dream of transcendence? Gehenna can- <laughs> Garrett, please try to remain civil. We know you've spent more time than anyone trying to get out, but it's okay for some of us to have doubts. We fought hard to transform Gehenna from a prison into a home. So, what's interesting to me is that they seem to be confusing Gehenna with their location even though it's actually this message board that they've created. They can have this message board no matter where they are, the location doesn't matter, so... Really, I'm not freeing them from Gehenna. I'm freeing them from their location, and they can still access Gehenna. Or they can still have it in the real world, or whatever. They've spent so long being trapped that they think that the physical location is part of Gehenna. Okay, this is the 8-plus thread that we couldn't read. Let's try and read it before the end of the episode. A number of topics to address with some urgency. Orc? Spider has been exploiting the gallery code again to, con to contact other citizens. We've closed the loophole, but he managed to get a number of posts onto the billboard before we could shut it down. Unfortunately, they were heavily upvoted, so the butte counts were high. What can we do if they insist on supporting him? We can't ban the entire community. You know that I hate to interfere, but I think you might find this library resource insightful. Spider? Applying the indices to form predictions. As we have seen already, voters can be reframed and understood as consumers of political product, where that product is made up of the ideals and polit policies embodied by your candidate. In this chapter, we will look at how broad data about your citizens can be applied to blah. Although individual people sometimes confound statistical models, over a large enough sample size we can be uncannily accurate. We can look at the general inputs, your citizens' education, wealth, religious beliefs, etc., calculate what outcome will satisfy them most, and then adapt policy. Politics is no different to any other commercial machine. In later chapters, we will explore how these techniques can be used to directly affect voting patterns by subtle alteration of the ways that questions are asked. Ooh, they're getting into vote manipulation. The next thing you know, they'll be gerrymandering. Interesting. Alright, let's get out of here. Get to a different puzzle. 
Actually, we're gonna have to do that next episode. Why did I take the long way out? Look, I could have just gone directly right here. Instead, I went through all this nonsense. Wow. Okay. Well, guys, as always, thank you for watching. And if you hate the sound of my voice, leave a dislike. It's up to you. And I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye. How am I gonna...